Hello everyone, welcome back. Suppose we need 5 local area network with few devices in each local area network. So obviously we need at least 5 switches to create such scenario. Can it be established with a single switch? And that's the topic of the day, the virtual LAN which is popularly called as the VLAN. Let us start the session with the outcomes. In today's lecture we have 5 outcomes, let's see what are they. Upon the completion of the session, the learner will be able to. Outcome number 1, we will know the need for VLAN. Outcome number 2, we will see the working of VLAN. Outcome number 3, we will see the benefits of VLAN. Outcome number 4, we will know the types of VLAN. And outcome number 5, we will see VLAN frame tagging. Let's see what is VLAN today. VLAN. Let's contemplate a situation. Suppose there is a switch and I am bringing a hammer. And I am breaking the switch into two pieces. I am giving one piece to one local area network and the other piece to another local area network. But physical partitioning of switch cannot work. And VLANs work this way. Instead of making the physical partitioning, VLANs make logical partitioning. So inside a single switch, we are going to make multiple local area networks. And that is why we are calling it as virtual local area network, simply VLANs. Let's see how VLAN work. In this scenario, I am going to create three virtual local area networks, that is three VLANs. Let me call this VLAN as a yellow VLAN. Let this be the blue VLAN and let this be the green VLAN. And these are the ports that are in yellow VLAN. And these are the ports that are in blue VLAN. And these are the ports that are in green VLAN. And the yellow VLAN devices are having the IP addressing scheme that is starting with 10.10.10. .10 Let's assume this is 10.10.10.1, this is 10.10.10.2 and this is 10.10.10.3. And let this be 172.16.15.1, this be 172.16.15.2 and let this be 172.16.15.3. And let this be 192.168.1.1. Let this be 192.168.1.2. And let this be 192.168.1.3. And if you observe, these are the ports that are belonging to one VLAN. These are the ports that are belonging to another VLAN. And these are the ports that are belonging to the other VLAN. Suppose if this device wants to send some packet, only these two devices can receive. Actually, this is one local area network because these three ports are belonging to one virtual local area network and only these three devices can communicate with each other. Similarly, these three devices can communicate among themselves and these three devices can also communicate among themselves. Suppose if this guy that is 10.10.10.1 .10 is sending a broadcast, will everyone receive this broadcast? No. Only that VLAN will receive this broadcast. Suppose if this guy is sending a broadcast message, only these two guys will receive. The broadcast message will be received by the devices that are in one VLAN. So the broadcast message of this, that is yellow VLAN's broadcast, will not disrupt blue VLAN or green VLAN. Now you may be asking me a question. Sir, all these devices are connected to this switch only. Suppose if this device wants to communicate with this device, can it be possible? It is not possible now. Why? Because this is having a different IP addressing scheme and this is having a different IP addressing scheme. So obviously these two cannot communicate with each other because the devices are belonging to two different networks. Then we need a router to do this. So I am bringing in a router and I am connecting this router to one of the freely available ports. And this port is going to carry the traffic of all VLANs. And that is why we call this port as the trunk port. And this is the trunk line. So this trunk line is going to carry the traffic of yellow VLAN, blue VLAN and green VLAN. Let's see the theoretical aspects of VLAN now. A VLAN is a logical partition of a layer 2 network. Obviously a switch is going to do this VLAN activities. Suppose if there is a switch like this and we are going to create some logical partitioning. So this is one partition that is this is one VLAN. So how many ports are there in this VLAN? Six ports. So I can connect six devices to this. So we have another VLAN. So this is VLAN 2 and this is VLAN 3. Let this be pink VLAN. Let this be green VLAN and let this be red VLAN. 
So how many VLANs we have? Three virtual local area networks inside this switch. So I am going to group the ports such that some ports are belonging to some VLAN and some ports are belonging to other VLANs. So I am creating a logical partition in the switch and that is what it is mentioned. It is the logical partition and multiple partitions can be created allowing for multiple VLANs to coexist. When we say multiple partitions, it means there can be multiple VLANs. How many VLANs are here in the scenario? This is VLAN 1, this is VLAN 2 and this is VLAN 3. And if we don't create any VLAN, these ports will become the part of the default VLAN. So we can evidence that there are multiple partitions in the switch. And then each VLAN is a broadcast domain, usually with its own IP network. Suppose there is a device that is connected with this port. And if this device is giving a broadcast message, then only these ports will be receiving it. And this broadcast message will not be given to any other VLANs, even default VLAN. VLANs are mutually isolated and packets can only pass between them via a router. Suppose a device which is connected with this VLAN wants to send a message to the device which is in this VLAN. It cannot be sent with the help of this switch alone. So it needs a router in order to send this because these two VLANs are two different networks. So two different networks cannot communicate with each other with the help of a switch. We need a router. The partitioning of the layer 2 network takes place inside a layer 2 device usually via a switch. The hosts grouped within a virtual LAN are unaware of the VLAN's existence. It means if there is a host which is connected to red VLAN and that host is not even aware of that it is belonging to that VLAN. Only a switch knows about that VLAN and the devices are not even aware of to which VLAN it actually belonged to. And let's see the benefits of VLAN. The benefits are very straightforward. Security is achieved because the broadcast message of one VLAN is not going to disturb others and again to some extent we are getting security and the cost reduction in place of purchasing multiple switches we are purchasing only single switch or number of switches that we actually require and we are going to create logical partitions in the switch and then we have better performance and maximum utilization of the switch and then it shrinks the broadcast domain and then it improves the IT staff efficiency and simpler project and application management. Let's now see the various types of VLAN. The various types of VLAN include the data VLAN, the default VLAN, the native VLAN, the management VLAN and the voice VLAN. So I'm not going into the details of these VLANs. And next we will see the VLAN tagging. Suppose if this is the Ethernet frame, we are already familiar with this Ethernet frame where we have the destination MAC address, source MAC address, the type or length field, the data and the frame check sequence that is the error detection portion. So between the source MAC address and the type, we will be having a tagging and this tag only is responsible for identifying the VLAN. So we have the Ethernet type which is of two bytes, we have the priority and we have the VLAN identifier which is of 12 bits. And this tagging will be done by the switch. Whenever a host sends a packet, the switch will receive that packet and it puts a VLAN tag to its frame so that whenever that frame is passed through multiple switches, every switch can recognize to which VLAN it has to send. And this tagging is called as IEEE 802.1Q frame tagging. Let's see about this frame tagging. The frame tagging is the process of adding a VLAN identification header to the frame. Normally, a switch will do the frame tagging. It is used to properly transmit multiple VLAN frames through a trunk link because the trunk link is going to carry multiple VLANs data. So when the trunk link carries multiple VLANs data, the switch needs to know that frame belongs to the device of which VLAN and that is why we want frame tagging. Suppose if this device wants to send some data to this device and when the data is sent by this device, what the switch will do? It puts the VLAN tag to the Ethernet frame and that tagged frame will be sent to this trunk and router receives it and router then forwards the data to this device or to the destination device. VLAN trunks are going to take multiple traffic and VLAN tagging are very important to recognize that the frame belongs to which VLAN. And switches tag frames to identify the VLAN to that they belong. We already have seen this. And different tagging protocols exist and IEEE 802.1Q is a very popular tagging protocol. And then this protocol defines the structure of the tagging header added to the frame. And the switches add the VLAN tags to the frame before placing them in the trunk links. 
So normally switch only is going to tag this and what the switch need to do when it wants to put the frame on the non-trunk ports. The switch will be removing the tags before forwarding the frames through the non-trunk ports. So the switches add VLAN tags to the frames before placing them into the trunk links and then remove the tags before forwarding them through the non-trunk port. When properly tagged, the frames can traverse any number of switches via trunk link. So the frames can traverse any number of switches if it is properly tagged and the correct VLAN destination can be reached if properly tagged and still can be forwarded within the correct VLAN at the destination. And that's the power of VLAN frame tagging. And that's it guys. I hope now you know the need for VLAN. We know the working of VLAN, we saw the benefits of VLAN, we also have seen the types of VLAN and the VLAN frame tagging. I hope you guys enjoyed the lecture and thank you for watching.